Martin. Look after yourself. Shall I take that one? And how are we with time, John? Are we about ready? We are 5-2. Five 5-2, yeah, two. Five which is what I wanted to do, is to get this going. I've got quite a lot of that. Hey? <laughs> I've got quite a lot of preamble. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have our friends, family, parents and other teachers joining us now. So you can't put me on mute. That's the thing in this setting. Now I'm physically here. You can't just put me on mute and head off out to the, well, you wouldn't today, to the garden. But uh, um, it's great to see you all. It's been so, so special to chat to you and see how things from, were from your point of view over the past few weeks. Because it has been a bit of a roller coaster, one of the students said to me as their uh, quote for the summer. And in fact, that started back on March the 20th, isn't it? And that's the last time we were gathered together as a group. So it's really, really lovely to see all of you. Um, but I also want to welcome our guests and just say a big hello to friends and family who have been with us throughout the past two years and without you we would not be where we are today which is sitting amongst a phenomenal group of young people who are ready for independent living in the next stage so thank you also i hope many of your other subject teachers are joining us uh, this afternoon because they in their way have made a huge and significant contribution to your time in the sixth form but also to the opportunities that now await you going forward which is so so exciting I wanted just to uh, advise you, if I may, if you could just put your phones on silent or airplane mode or whatever you feel like, just so that we're not distracted. It'd be really helpful, so that'd be great. Thank you. And should there be any kind of emergency, follow me. We'll be going out those doors to your right, most of you, some to your left, and there are uh, emergency stairs at either end of that particular balcony, so that's just a little bit of housekeeping. Lots of thanks as well to say as well to um, a number of people who, without whom we could not have had this afternoon. So I wanted to thank the behind the scenes people. So Crown Plaza and staff, we thank you for your hospitality. It's been such a joy for us to be able to get together and thank you for providing such a socially distanced atmosphere and environment for us to do that in. But also want to thank, uh, where's Amy and Cleo? Could you stand up, could you bear it? Let's give Amy and Cleo a round of applause. They put this beautiful, beautiful decor together. And there was only one balloon casualty, I think, throughout the whole thing, wasn't there, Amy? So, so thank you to you and to Claire. We really appreciate all your efforts uh, to make this such a beautiful uh, afternoon for us. Also, other thanks, please, um, to um, Mrs Hall, of course, who worked closely with Amy, our head of social committee, on making this happen. So thank you to Mrs Hall. And of course, Mr Hope and Mrs Wood have done lots and lots behind the scenes, the unsung heroes. Mr Hope's particularly good with an organza bag, aren't you, Mr Hope? So we won't go into too much about that. But your number six is all of you have a gift today. All of you have an award today because you are all greatly valued and we're really thrilled that you're all here. So do remember to take that organza bag with you with that number six for your lapel. <coughs> also, some thanks um, to Mr Carr, who is live streaming. <clears throat> which in itself deserves a round of applause, I think, Mr. Carr, doesn't it? <coughs> and of course, you'll be able to see if you've been filmed when you look at this on YouTube later on today. So we'll make sure that you're aware of where to, where to find that. Um, <clears throat> also, thank you to um, Mr. Morrissey, who's helped with lots of the details around um, to really bring this together and, and make it our sixth form, our own event. So thank you, Mr. Morrissey, for that. Can we give Mr. Morris a round of applause? <laughs> and I'm bound to have forgotten to thank somebody, but whoever you are, thank you. To the business of today, we are here to celebrate. You know how much we love to recognise your achievements, how much we enjoy celebrating your successes, and all of you today are winners. I don't want any of you to think just because you haven't come forward to receive a certificate, or a voucher, that you are not a winner in our eyes. It's been an absolute thrill to work with you as a year group for the past two years. And you are trailblazers, year 13, there's no doubt. You are 
first at so many things. And one of the things that uh, has really been very important to Mr Hope was that you were his first Year 12 group. He got to practice on you. And I know Mr Hope wanted to come forward and just say a few words to you, <clears throat> just to mark that moment. <laughs> Not, Mr. Hope, to you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think it's going to hold. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're safe. Um, ladies and gents, you were my inaugural year group uh, at Clare's Court, and it was epic. Um, I have many fond memories. Um, and the biggest thing for me, really, is to say keep in touch, because you are epic. Um, it's such an odd situation you've been through. And we just want to hear of all your true successes as you progress. Um, and we need to enjoy this afternoon, have a great time, and it's lovely to see you all. Thank you, Mr Hope. And he's made a difference, I know, in so many of your lives, so really grateful for all you've done, Mr Hope. Thank you. Um, it's, it's quite a special day today. I, I mentioned that you're trailblazers. You, you are the first at so many things. Mr Hope's first year 12, a given. But there's so many other firsts. We had never had a celebration of year 12 before you arrived, and there was so much to celebrate. Do you remember the Aim High Awards that we did last summer? We invited parents in, and we had lots of musical items, Miss Morland, didn't we? We had a bit of flute from you, we had a lovely afternoon, uh, sorry, lovely morning, and, and that went terribly well. A first, fantastic. Also, student voice, quite a noisy student voice from your year group, which is great because we want your input. And actually, the boys wanted a change in the dress code. And guess what? As a result of your input, we changed to a more informal, smart, casual business dress. So thank you for that. You leave that legacy. Other firsts include, well, a lockdown. <laughs> Nobody else in my time has, has been part of a lockdown time. And I have to say, I just want to credit you on your response to that. The resilience, the fortitude, the determination that you showed to finish courses. And some of you joined our U101s, which were a great success. And because of that, we're going to run those again next year, because you showed us how profitable, how useful those, those were. So thank you. Lots of firsts. Lots of firsts. So thank you for that. Um, not a first, Mr Wilding is very used to these occasions, um, but Mr Wilding is your greatest uh, fan. He has uh, championed you throughout your time at Clare School, whether you started at juniors, uh, in senior school, or you came into sixth form. But he is a true champion for sixth form. He always takes an interest in what you're doing. He's always uh, very proud of all your achievements and accomplishments. And it's a real honour today to invite Mr Wilding to come forward and just say a few words before we start the prize giving and the award ceremony. Thank you, Mr. Wilding. Thank you very much, Mrs. Rogers, and uh, hello, everybody. Good afternoon, uh, welcome. And I love these hotels. They're just so wonderful to feel that you're in a very special place for a very special occasion. When, imagine yourselves, uh, you can't possibly remember what it was like the day before the A-level results. I'd like you to take yourselves through to what it must have been like for Mr. Carr at one minute past midnight on Wednesday morning when uh, he is trying to make sure that the stuff comes down the tubes. And the stuff that came down the tubes wasn't quite working for Mr. Carr. Um, he caught up with me I can't remember whether it's five or six o'clock on Wednesday morning uh, to say, uh, Houston, we have a problem. And it was quite evident by the end of the Wednesday that uh, Mrs. Uh, Rogers, Mr. Hope, and Mr. Wiley had to have their skates on. Because, uh, as you gathered, the mutant algorithm had arrived. Uh, as things turn out now, something like 97% of your awards were awarded at A-level by the computer rather than by dint of either your efforts or the computer assessment grades from our school. And that was a really blindingly true moment for me to look at Mrs Rogers in the eyes and say, 
we need to roll up our sleeves and get working. At the start of your A-level program in year 12, you started laying down a trace of the things you could do. You did that in your classrooms. You did that in your assessments. You did that in the things you did outside the school, on the water, on playing fields, in the UK, abroad. And as you aimed high, you also thought about making a difference. And so you created a record for yourselves that allowed you, just under a year ago, to aim high at your award ceremony. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying this because when the solids hit the fan and anything coming down the computer isn't trustworthy, we had to go and call upon your data. The day or two days before uh, the Wednesday in question, Mr. Carr and I had to wrestle with the fact that apparently your mocks were going to be incredibly important, even though we weren't certain that your mock results were in any way recognisably the targets you were setting out to achieve. After all, we now know that mock exams are mocks for different reasons. So, dear old Mr. Carr, again, he of the live stream today, has massively and rapidly put together a program to extract from the deep bowels of our database your mock results, because it was, of course, just Williamson, the Secretary of State for Education, who decided that maybe the mock exams would be better than the Newton algorithm. On Thursday morning, from 8 o'clock onwards, you were opening up your A-level results, thinking, I can see the school's being kind with my computer assessment grades, or maybe not. But certainly the computer's not being kind. What are we going to do? And of course, at the same time, the universities are throwing down their truth to you, either that your guaranteed place is guaranteed, or Houston, you have a problem. So I'll go back to the traces that you made available in your school record of year 13. Your results at half term, your performances in the two mock exams, the step-by-step -step preparation that you've done in year 12 started materialising in the quality work that was evident in year 13. In the midst of lockdown, I was a beneficiary of seeing the A-level coursework come in for art and textiles. It was remarkable. You'd chosen in the lockdown period just to stretch those extra sinews to make a huge difference. What you didn't know, but your teachers were aware of, was we were marking up you for the efforts you put in past the last bit of data that you put in, be it a mock result two, to the exam. We marked you up again. Is it possible? Have you actually stayed true to the cause? Have you done the right thing right. It's really important to understand that we can be efficient. We can get our coursework in. We can make sure that it's all tidy and done. It doesn't mean to say it's good. We can be effective, of course, by doing the best things we possibly can do. But if that's not in a timely way, or it's not recorded in the data that we've got, then again, that might be lost. But most of you were both effective and efficient. You did the right things right. So when in August, Just Williamson reneged on, oh, it's a uh, mocks, it's this, they reverted back to the computer assessment grades offered by school. They were so solid, they were so remarkable that you were able to get, for us, the results you deserved, for most of you, the guaranteed place in your first uh, choice of university. But above all, you got that kind of sense that your work in school over a two-year period had been validated. It still hasn't ended even now. I've worked with BTEC, Pearson, I've worked with exam boards in the last week to keep tweaking so that the errors they continued to make have been put right or are to be put right. But I salute you because there is a holy trinity about what school's about. The teachers, the parents, and the students. Without your dynamic contribution, 
your parents and your school can't show or echo your voice. You were remarkable over the two-year period. The traces, the breadth, the depth of what you had to achieve was there for all to see. Thank you. Your parents are proud of you. Your teachers are proud of you. Above all, you, I know, are proud of everything you've been achieved, and I salute you this afternoon. Congratulations, Year 13, COVID 2020. You've done really well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, really and genuinely, I think um, you've averaged three or four hours sleep a night, haven't you, over the past few weeks, probably, yeah. similarly, um, to make sure that you are getting the absolute best you can, which is, which is fantastic. So thank you. Um, the next part of the um, afternoon now will centre around um, subject prizes and other very specific and special awards which your teachers, who are many of whom, your tutors particularly here gathered today, have sat down and thought about where you've really shone in certain subject areas and we wanted to celebrate that today. As I mentioned at the start, if you don't come forward to receive anything, you are still a winner you have still done really, really well. You stayed the course and you've got your number six that you can wear with pride now on your lapel going forward. But we want to go through the subject prizes first. Some of you have got more than one certificate and award to collect and you'll notice on the front desk here that they are named. You just grab yours and keep that with you. Probably put it somewhere safe for 24 hours. That's the latest advice. Uh, put it into quarantine for 24 hours, but then get a frame and make sure it goes on your wall and be proud. Um, so the first person to receive an award is going to demonstrate to the rest of the award winners exactly how this works. So I, and then alternately Mr. Wilding, will read something about you as a student in the particular subject you've won an award for. When that citation has been read, if you could come forward to the table, collect your certificate and your envelope, and then make your way across to that ballooned poster to the right, where Mrs. Wimshurst is prepared to take a photo of you, because we'd love to keep photographs of you receiving your awards. Okay, so the first person to receive an award isn't actually here. Mr. Anstey, Dan Anstey, who joined us um, to redo Year 13, actually came and uh, made a big impact, particularly in the art room. I know Ms. Shelley Smith and Mr. Waring spent lots of time with Dan and really have enjoyed um, watching him develop and grow as a young artist. And he showed a, de a dedication and an enthusiasm for art. He impressed his teachers, particularly with his drawing skills, produced a huge body of work, um, particularly around architecture, which was his particular interest. And he spent a lot of time in the art room. And it's a shame, I don't think Ed's arrived either, but Ed and Dan, who became great mates through art, are now both going to the University of Cardiff, strangely, so they'll be able to build their friendship further, which is really exciting. Uh, Miss Shelley Smith and uh, Mr. Wary said they're going to miss his, uh, the conversation with him about his work because he always had something interesting to say. Uh, but we do wish him all the best studying art, uh, architecture sorry, at Cardiff University. So that's for Dan. A quick round of applause for Dan in case he's watching. <laughs> now, our, our next prize winner has actually been awarded two prizes for biology and for psychology. So this person will be the first to come and uh, blaze the trail. This is the first time because it's Anna. So I want to read a little bit about you, Anna, first, and then if you can demonstrate to everyone exactly how this works, I'll be really grateful. So from the start in biology, Anna proved herself to be a very determined student, knew exactly what she needed to do to achieve her ambition of working with animals. She's highly organised, creative, conscientious, and an excellent biologist, completing all homework tasks to deadline and to a very high standard. Uh, in assessments, Anna was invariably in the, sh uh, in the top two of the class across the whole two years. Great data for you, Anna. That's why it was so good. Um, she's shown an interest in all aspects of the course, uh, contributing insightful and reflective comments in lessons and been an absolute pleasure to teach. And your biology teachers wish you all the very best as you study animal science at Nottingham. For psychology, Mrs. Lamania Richardson has written that you're one of the most hardworking students she's ever had the ple pleasure of teaching. And despite a few questions around the subject at the start, you got focused and quickly established yourself as an invaluable member of the group. You have a passion and an ability uh, which was quickly realised and you picked yourself up every time things were tough, you picked yourself up and showed how brilliant and capable you are as a student. 
Throughout the course, your confidence grew, that's what we'd expect, and your willingness to question established theories and your ability to produce exceptional answers are one of the many reasons you achieved such a commendable grade. Mrs Emmanuel Richardson and all of us are incredibly proud of you, Anna. You deserve that A star. So, Anna, congratulations on biology and psychology. So, a big round of applause. Do come forward. And right at the front. <laughs> okay, I'm just assisting. So Harry Ward is the uh, winner of the BTEC <laughs> Hold on, Harry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. No He's movement yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so at the beginning of the BTEC course, Mr. Carter writes, we were aware that Harry was an excellent sportsman and hardworking, conscientious student. Harry continued to demonstrate these attributes throughout the course where he excelled in the coursework, practical and examination aspects of the course. Finishing with outstanding results, Harry put the rules, regs and officiating unit to use straight away and the PE department were grateful for his help officiating the Year 7 football on Saturday mornings. Harry deserves all the success he has. Have good luck at university. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Harry <laughs> And I think Harry gets the applause and the first prize as well for enthusiasm, Harry. Big smile for Mrs. Wim says, go on, Harry, go on. <laughs> okay, well done, Harry. And Harry's off to study at Bath University. I think that's a one or two of our students heading off to Bath University, so I'm sure you're going to... Uh, be able to grow and develop friendships from there. <laughs> Moving on to the prize for IT. This goes to James McPhee. So James, you don't need to start the long walk just yet. I know you're at the back. But uh, Mr Hope has written a lovely piece about you and your thorough understanding of the subject. Um, soon became second nature. You always found ways to answer the questions that were set. Sometimes, apparently, before the questions were even asked, you had the answer. Um, you, made find, and you also made time to find an online game during lessons. We'll talk about that later. Uh, James. He managed his time well, met all deadlines, was actively engaged and acted immediately on feedback, taking the time to secure his understanding. And you deservedly, James, secured a distinction in your ICT. Mr Hope and the rest of us wish you all the very best at Portsmouth as you head off to university there. So now, James, start the long walk forward. On you come. <laughs> at all is it James standing here <laughs> yeah we've got to get one more James <laughs> so Mr Buckle in putting away the uh, business uh, prize uh, writes as follows this young man showed interest in business from the start of the course uh, in lessons, he was full of enthusiasm and drive. With time, his progress and passion for business, and turning up to some lessons instead of playing rugby, led to <laughs> in-depth class discussions on topical issues, which were shared with the whole class, including role plays and extra independent essay writing, which were a delight to read and assess. He's a highly motivated young man, meeting all deadlines, and has been a pleasure to teach as he enlightened the classroom with invaluable contributions. Now, I wish him every success in the future as he studies sports management and coaching at the University of Bath. I'm sure he'll continue to excel and lead in his chosen areas of interest. Con congratulations, Max Keller. I am so proud of you. <laughs> it's Mr. Buckle for you. Well done, Max Keller, <laughs> Business Award. Listening in, so. 
Right, just uh, uh, Giacomo uh, Ravelli is not here for the economics prize, so we, we won't gloss over it because uh, what a wonderful contribution he made in the sixth form. Hard-working, committed and well-rounded individual uh, as uh, 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 some of the uh, most says uh, Miss uh, um, was it who, who? Mrs. I think Miss Barger actually. Miss Barger and, wrote, and this, right, wrote this right. Uh, 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 hardest uh, working ever come across in their teaching career in economics. Always quick to grasp theory and not afraid to challenge conventional co concepts. He constantly performed at the top of his class and was always up to the challenge of delivering parts of the lesson accurately to his peers, sometimes even better than what I would have done. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Are we going to see this man on the tennis courts? or at UCLA in doing his degree. Yeah, tennis first. Tennis, tennis first. first, that's where he is now. Yeah, yeah. The uh, economic prize to Giacomo Ravelli. Well done. Um, our, our geography prize winner, unfortunately, is also, well, I don't know if it is unfortunate, I think she's on a boat in the Mediterranean as I'm speaking. Um, I don't know if she's going to be able to live stream into us, but uh, if she is, uh, the prize for geography goes to Kayla, Kayla Raven james also our head girl. Um, she's been an excellent geography student, determination, enthusiasm, inquisitive, um, and was particularly commended on a, a wide variety of science, of uh, the science of Earth's life support systems, um, and right through to the human rights topics, which are very, very on um, topic at the moment. Um, particularly impressive writing style, always able to include the right uh, and most important and key issues in her written work. Very positive, very motivated, and both Miss Andrews and uh, Miss Clifford thoroughly enjoyed teaching her. She goes on to Portsmouth as well to study psychology, and you know we're going to all want to wish Kayla every success. So a round of applause for Kayla. <laughs> She's got two. Uh, so uh, Sophie Bartlett is up for two awards, uh, actually three awards, well. uh, for the uh, <laughs> f uh, first person to uh, uh, ever have me on the phone to her Cambridge College at just one minute past eight on the Thursday morning saying, do not ever let this girl's award go down. And the award of two prizes in this great group of youngsters, Sophie, is a great tribute to everything that you've done. You're naturally talented. You're an intelligent historian with a gift of empathizing, understanding and analyzing the rich and complex human story that is history. Throughout her sixth form study, she has embodied the higher skills required to do well in this discipline and shone in her ability to communicate her thoughts and findings. Such is her aptitude for the subject, she shone at her Cambridge interview, impressing the dons not only with her mental dexterity, but also her essay on the economic effects of the directory's policies on the French during the revolution. On top of her academic success, I'd like to thank Sophie for the kindness and support she offered to her fellow students always willing to explain a finer point of interpretation, um, suggest improvements to arguments or clarify the precise nature of essay writing. I wish her well, says Miss Bullough, and every success for what promises to be an exciting and fulfilling university uh, future at Cambridge reading history. So well done on that. Now the next bit is in, in actually a fully fluent French. Yes, so I'll let you yes. read that I'm out I'm going here. to do the French so, version, yeah, am I? Okay, yeah. I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate the French into English, ah, okay. just as I do, because that's who I am. Um, so I will do that. Uh, in French, Sophie, you only opted to do French quite late, I believe, didn't you? That was quite a late decision. But Mrs. Latimer, Madame, delighted that you did. Um, you were always hardworking and inquisitive keen to acquire not just vocabulary and some, but the actual cultural understanding and knowledge of the country as well as complex language. Uh, Miss Latimer has thoroughly enjoyed teaching you throughout your time at Clare's Court, not just in the sixth form, and she's confident that you're going to achieve any goals you set yourself in the future, and she wishes you, as do we all, the very best for the future. And I do know you're taking a gap year, and I am going to have a chat with Mrs. Amanda Richardson before the end of today, because we're going to see if we can get you to come back in uh, Sophie's offered to come and help with some tutoring with some of the EPQ students, Mrs. Manu Richardson, which I think will be a great uh, uh, idea. So, Sophie, receive the applause, come and get your awards. Yeah, history. It's another devil.
It's interesting in Becky Morland's uh, citations for her two words of English and philosophy and ethics, we could almost read them simultaneously, yeah, yeah, couldn't yeah. we? They are both uh, remarkable tributes to an exemplary student who showed a genuine interest in the texts uh, we studied and always was an open and enthusiastic contributor to discussions. Becky quickly grasped the higher level skills needed to be an effective English literature student and her essays were always intelligent and well thought out. Becky always sought to improve herself and in doing so her appreciation for literature grew and developed. We both very much enjoyed having Becky in the class and wish her all the very best both at university and her future career. Philosophy and ethics were mm -hmm, thoughtful mm -hmm, in what they mm -hmm. said, exactly saying uh, working hard, as, of course, they say, did many of the class. Well done, the rest of you. That's where the awards are spread more widely. One thing that separated Becky from the others was her work ethic during the lockdown. Every single piece was completed on time and to the best of her ability, even when she knew it would have or could have little effect on her final grade. She did her best because that is Becky's attitude to everything, and she should be applauded. Well done, Becky Morland. Two awards, English and Philosophy and Ethics. And uh, Becky's also going to take a gap year, aren't you? And, and stick around. You're going to come and see me in a couple of weeks' time, aren't you? So moving on to maths, an area of mystery to me. Um, I wish I'd had some of your maths teachers as my maths teachers when I was at school, but I think you've been blessed, all the mathematicians here would agree, you've been blessed with fantastic teaching throughout your time on the A-level courses. And it was really, really difficult for the staff to separate uh, one student out from the others to make an award of the maths prize too. And this particular individual is very quick to learn and apply new methods, demonstrated excellent skills and intuition, particularly for the mechanics sections in further maths, because he took further maths too, that narrows it down a little. Um, this young man enjoyed working on more off, uh, challenging maths questions, a great problem solver, eager and determined always to apply his knowledge, especially with, is it writ angle or right angle, Mr. Depp? Writ angle, got you, thank you. There you go, I've, been, I've learned something today. Um, whenever a new puzzle was released, this young man tackled it with relish, was committed to solving it as quickly as possible, had a genuine love of searching for the solution, combined with a great aptitude for maths, which enabled this young man to achieve an A both in maths A level as well as his further maths AS, which is an incredible achievement, so well done. We wish him every success. He's off to Birmingham, I believe, to study engineering. Do I need to say more? Where is Jacob Amatrano? Jacob, there you are. It's winner of the Maths Prize. Do come and receive your awards. <laughs> no one's watching, Jacob. It's okay. <laughs> One of the remarkable things about our country is uh, we lead the world in uh, the creative industries and former uh, boys and girls of the school are uh, over the last three or four years making a huge reputation in the world of uh, media, broadcasting, uh, as well as film uh, in this country and in uh, America. Uh, if you've spotted any of the Game of Thrones stuff, uh, that came from the whole visualisation of that came from a former pupil of the school, Sam Conway, uh, who is now up at Pinewood, and he built his craft skills in the subject of design technology. When you've got the skills of a conscientious, hard worker, uh, understanding how to put technology together, with the creative, willing, determined and passionate media studies student, we've got, I suppose, a guaranteed Golden Globe winner of the future. Throughout the course, uh, Miss Bell has seen his confidence grow. It's been pleasing to see his ideas come to fruition. She knows he'll continue to develop his ideas and his passion for film further when he starts his film production degree at Portsmouth University. I wish Tom Hattam the very best of luck in his future endeavours, and I'm excited to see what he decides to do for his future career. If he couldn't vote for somebody for the future who could be our next Oscar, it could be uh, the technologist... <laughs> Media student Tom Hatton. Step forward, Tom. 
to thank Tom for during lockdown he took over our six form hashtag staying connected uh, pro uh, publication which went out every week uh, which I know staff were in, uh, enjoyed as much as students so thanks for that as well Tom brilliant thank you so much and good luck and one of the thank yous I should have said at the very start was to Ed who played beautifully while we were milling around chatting and eating and drinking. And thank you to Ed, who has come through our music. T thank you, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ed is, a, is one of the finest products from our music tech department, and we're going to honour our music tech uh, prize winner now. And that young man is also looking to further study music. Well, at least I think so. I'm not sure after our chat yesterday. But yes, we're now saying we are. I'm teasing. Um, but uh, Josh has been an exemplary student. Mr. Gravit has, has described you as a great ambassador for the music department, commitment, enthusiasm throughout your studies, and also the wider work, particularly, do you remember the lockdown day when you did a Queen set and we had a riot? It's probably the last time we were in such close proximity, Josh, but it was a great time. And even during one of our um, virtual meets, um, after results on our celebration, we did radio. What was it we did? Radio Yeah, we're going to have to do that before the end of this afternoon. That was fantastic. So let me invite Josh Morgan Ford, Music Tech Prize winner extraordinaire. Well done, Josh. <laughs> Joe is a double winner as well. I've got him there. It's a great surprise uh, to me. Uh, to see Josh come forward to get this award because, of course, I've seen him give so much time to the school for his music, for his sport, for his general good uh, 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 support of everything we do in the school. A living legend uh, in the school of somebody who can do it all and succeed. And I kind of follow that on with uh, uh, Joe Stobbs because Joe uh, has been a, a great ambassador for the uh, sport of rowing as well as for the engagement of students in uh, the doing the right things right and getting the kind of A-level results he did at the same time as being the elite athlete he became is no small uh, 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 prize and uh, gaining the chemistry and physics awards in this uh, talented group of youngsters is, is, is a real uh, uh, achievement. Excellent ability to analyse and solve complex problems is able to do one of the most challenging things in the subject of chemistry to make links between topics and difficult concepts. Always calm and cheerful, he's bright and lessened with his quiet humour and willingness to help his peers. Dr Lochran has thoroughly enjoyed teaching him and wishes Joe all the best uh, in his uh, future studies. Now, uh, from physics, Mrs Williams adds, uh, you were always going to be an able physicist working consistently well throughout the two years, always ready to take advice to improve his skills, always arrived with a smile and a positive attitude, and, of course, above all, having made that impression, became a pleasure to teach. Mrs Williams, Dr Lochran, wish them all the very best in future endeavours. Our Chemistry and Physics Award winner, Joe Stobbs. And they tried to take one of Joe's stars away, but we said no, Joe, didn't we? We said no. <laughs> Joe's another one of the students off to Bath, so I'm sure you'll be meeting for roast dinners on Sundays. Extra potatoes. Well done. And we're going to turn our attention to drama. Now, there's lots of drama queens in this room at this moment, but we're going to celebrate one in particular. Um, and I had the privilege of going to watch the, um, just before lockdown, you did your drama moderation pieces, which were absolutely fantastic. And I know uh, you've all enjoyed working with Mrs. Olivier, who's an outstanding uh, drama teacher. This young lady always demonstrated a high level of creativity, very versatile and sensitive in all her performances. Her energy and 
determination, livened up rehearsals and lessons, and inspired other people, including lots of us on the staff, let me just say that. She showed the ability to develop her work independently, and as she moves on to study the history of music at the University of Liverpool, we want to celebrate only in a Cornish accent, is he? In a Cornish accent. Come on, come on down and get your prize. <laughs> Now, there's a, a difference between uh, being a major, uh, major uh, drama actress, music player like Izzy, uh, being a major games player, and being actually a very strong academic student of physical education. Uh, our winner here is extremely capable, excelled in every aspect of the course, set standards high. He's got a thorough knowledge and understanding of the course, and coupled with his excellent rowing ability. He was always going to thrive for a, strive for a top grade in the subject. Leo Griffiths did not disappoint as each and every piece of work was to a high standard. The P department would like to wish him the very best of luck in his future endeavours and we know he'll be successful in all that he does. Congratulations Leo, thoroughly deserved. the luxury of being able to change course at the last minute. He was, uh, had the grades that he needed to be able to apply for a different course and he's off to study an engineering based degree now uh, as opposed to a sports based degree. So well done Leo. Where? Yeah. Leo is, uh, Where are you going? Then? It's Newcastle isn't it? Yeah. Newcastle which is great. Right. Fantastic. Our uh, art students, our textile students, uh, photographers, uh, uh, all, all those creative individuals really flourished during lockdown. It was really exciting, particularly when we had um, some of the students in for, uh, for, for work in school, to watch staff working with you when you were remotely working from home on your various creative um, uh, coursework. And uh, we're going to turn our attention to textiles now because there was some phenomenal work that came through um, across my um, uh, screen of textiles work that have been produced by all the students that take the subject. But there's one particular student who stood out as a textiles um, specialist and this young lady has a huge amount of creativity, an exemplary work ethic, a true passion for the subject and she has achieved the success she richly deserves. She flourished in year 13 and it's wonderful to see that she's chosen to pursue a creative course at Loughborough University. So Joanna, it's you. Come and receive the Textiles Prize. Congratulations. <laughs> Some of our awards this evening, and this is the first, uh, not only carry with it the certificate and uh, voucher, but will in addition be in receipt of a donated prize from the family who sponsor this award. Christopher Green, after his degree in photography and media at Bar Spa, went off to travel uh, Canada and uh, came back to work both initially in uh, fine art and then now is a, a corporate manager within uh, world business Samsung. Our Christopher Green Award for Photography goes uh, uh, to uh, Sophie Houghton. Oh. Who, uh, yes. 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 You've got to stand there now Sophie, stand there. <laughs> Apparently she was outstanding how much effort and time she put into achieving success in her photography, let alone her teachers, particularly in year 13. Uh, Mr. Uh, um, sorry, uh, um, Miss Wimshurst uh, had never known a student make so much progress in a year. She took on board the comments from Mr. Isaac Johnson and herself. She learned to build on her strengths and work on her weaknesses. She produced two projects, one focused on emotion, the other on 1970s fashion. 
creating many striking images. She worked hard to learn skills in Photoshop. She preserved, preserved, she persevered to produce visually the ideas she had in her head. She's a bright, hard-working student. It's wonderful to see that her effort paid off. What's really impressive about Sophie is her ability to reflect and pursue ideas to demonstrate deeper thinking. I believe Sophie will be successful with whatever she sets her mind to do. There we go. Yeah, uh, Christopher Green Award for <laughs> Sophie Harrison. And you may have noticed in the maiden of advertising that it was a photograph of Sophie that we celebrated our results day with one of, one of a number of photographs that we shared with the local press. Um, a very fetching shot of Sophie in her garden, sipping on a glass of fizzy that morning. You do that a lot, Sophie. And Sophie's off to Leeds, which is what she always dreamed of doing, and we're thrilled for her. Now, I'm glad that this young lady has arrived, because I was a bit nervous at the start, Georgia, when, you, when I didn't see you to start with, but you're here now, and that's what's important. And um, uh, Mr. Wilding and I put Georgia forward for a very specific prize, the ISA Lexton Award, which goes to a very, very specifically outstanding individual um, and this is a nationwide um, prize. This covers schools up and down the land. So lots of entrants are put forward for this particular prize. We know how extraordinary Georgia is. We know her story. We've been with you through it, through thick and thin. And we are impressed by what a remarkable individual you are. And this is a bit tough because you didn't win, but as Mr. Wilder will probably explain, the winner of the Lexton Prize has a very, very unique story. Um, as do you, of course. But you did take the award as runner-up, and that is a huge celebration on the basis that this is a nationwide um, award. So please, uh, Georgia, do come forward. As you come forward to receive your prize, I'll just let people know, we hoped you were going to stay with us, didn't we, next year? But you've been enticed and, and sort of tempted to go and work at Cliveden uh, on water sports, funny enough. Who would have guessed? Who would have known? But Georgia, do come receive your prize and our heartiest congratulations. <laughs> As uh, Georgia comes up uh, in a little bit more detail, uh, Lord Alistair Lexton is uh, in the House of Lords. He is the president of our association and uh, he uh, conveyed this award this year on, and for the first time as a runner-up as well. Um, I'm sad to say I, 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 I regret I cannot remember the name of the winner. Suffice it to say that it was a he a Syrian uh, uh, disabled refugee from Damascus who made his way over to the UK, uh, eventually won a major scholarship to the Sixth Form College in Cardiff. He came out with four A stars in his A levels despite his incredible difficulties and not having English as his first language and he made the front page of the Daily Telegraph on A level results day. So, uh, a, a remarkable win for him. A remarkable testament to Georgia that she was such a close runner-up. And we will look forward to seeing your development as an apprenticeship, uh, as apprentice within the National Trust. Good luck to you. Thank you, James. The next award is uh, the Luke Award. This is for a person of outstanding sporting prowess and achievement. And this goes to another young lady, a young lady called Becky, Becky Vosley, who only arrived in the UK not even two years ago uh, since Becky landed on our shores. Um, but she arrived full of determination and tenacity, adapted quickly to the British education system and nailed those all important English and maths GCSEs and knuckled down on her BTEC course and has actually uh, done incredibly well in terms of BTEC results this summer. Um, the sport that she chose to pursue, for some unknown reason, no, I do understand it really, Becky, was triathlon. So she saw her dad um, training and competing and just thought, yeah, I'd like some of that. So the first competition she, en she entered, I remember we celebrated it in year 12, she won a gold medal. So that, that set the bar really high. But she's um, going on now to work as a GAP student at um, Godstow. She's promised she's going to pop in and say hello to, to me and Mrs Hall and Mr Hope uh, throughout the next uh, few months. Um, and she's looking now to go off to university, possibly Oxford Brooks. We're going to get you to apply for, I believe, for next September. So can we give it up for Becky Vosloo at uh, Luke <laughs> Sports Award. Thank you. As you gather, we're now on the second uh, uh, half of the table, and lovely to see uh, these major awards now coming thick and fast. Um, 
it may sound unusual, but when you've got a uh, student in the sixth form who gives up Saturday mornings refereeing for the under-12 football teams, uh, you know that he's uh, going that extra mile. He did so well in terms of handling the games, uh, impressing parents alongside, watching, normally quite critical, appreciative of the fact that he's got confidence in terms of decision-making and the way he communicated with his players. He wasn't given the easy fixtures to referee. He had to take, actually, the final under-12A fixture against Reading Bluecoats, always a very competitive fixture for anyone to referee. Mr Turner recommends this opportunity and prize to Harry because uh, of the seven years of consistent commitment to sport at Clare's Court. It's been a pleasure to watch him develop, not only as a talented sportsman, but also as a person over this period of time. Uh, all the very best for the future as you head off to the University of Bath to study sports management and coaching. McDonald Trophy, Harry Ward. And as Harry, Harry takes his hat off to that award, uh, many of you know uh, Justin Spanswick, the executive head of the organisation. Years ago, when he was a youngster coming through the school, he made an extraordinary, outstanding contribution to sport and we decided to name the Outstanding Contribution to Sport Award after uh, the Spanswick family name. This uh, winner this year took part at all team sports at school level, always excelling at rugby, tied into not just us as an inspirational leader, but very much part of uh, the wider Berkshire and uh, uh, progressing through to southwest England. Uh, under 18s representing Germany under 18s an outstanding achievement for Max Keller we wish him every success in the future and hopes that his rugby continues to progress at this very strong level so well done to Max Keller Spanswick Trophy to make a very special award this year. It's the Julian Budd Award, which we normally award to a specific um, leader in sport. But we've looked at the year, the two years that you guys have had. And another first that I uh, alluded to in my opening remarks was the first trip we've made to Bruford in the Gambia. And unfortunately, we won't be doing that anytime soon. But we do have lots to look back on with such pride, some amusement in some of the photographs and the videos that I've seen, Jacob dancing and various other. Uh, yes, Jacob, before the end of today, again, please. Um, it, it really was an incredible opportunity. And as a student body of volunteers, you were so excited about the prospect of going and being able to volunteer your help and your support in an unknown country. There aren't many schools that would venture to the Gambia. So credit to our staff, Miss Bell, uh, Mrs. Eva, and Mr. Bretherton for making that trip happen because I know it had an impact on all of you. And one person in particular who really stood out um, to Miss Bell, who's recommended this individual for this uh, award, um, was a force to be reckoned with. Quietly observing from the outside, this young man stepped up to challenges without even being prompted. He took the initiative, including levelling out the school playground, organising cricket coaching, teaching students to improve their hygiene. And at the education, the students saw in this young man a gentle giant. He would often have children hanging off his shoulders, and I've got photographs to prove it. Um, he did himself and our school extremely proud on this trip, and I know this willingness to take the lead and contribute to teamwork will continue as he starts to study at degree level. Wish him the very best of luck, as do we all. Ollie. Kempi! 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 as well Emily Creaser uh, winning outstanding contribution to school uh, a wider category to sport you arrived in the sixth form full of energy and drive 
You seem to take on the role of coordinating the Learning Ambassador team, throwing yourself into Young Enterprise, helping Sweet Tooth. Um, we remember uh, the strawberry laces fondly to complete the programme and developing many useful skills by participating. You volunteered to be part of the student panel interviewed by the BBC during the run-up to the Brexit vote, articulating your point of view well. Somehow, Emily found time to ride to a very high standard and develop strong friendships in her year group. She now takes her enthusiasm and talent to Oxford Brooks to study business and law. Now, she shares this award with Ed Cameron, who's got the brackets not, uh, not present uh, uh, under his name. So we'll just mark in passing that he was a huge contributor, was uh, Ed Cameron, at both junior and senior school, embodying the values of the school at all times, never failing to aim high as an academic student, with a strong work ethic, but also representing the school so strongly in rugby and football. He's quietly confident, takes his injury as well, and he carried on being involved in sport, even if he couldn't, uh, through things like the Lions Club, Swim Marathon, and Hamper Packing. So, outstanding contribution to school, Emily Creaser, and in his absence, Ed Cameron. This next uh, award winner is a very um, modest individual, I will say. He doesn't like lots of attention, so I'm not going to lavish lots of attention on it. But I do want to read a few things out about why they are the recipient of this very, very prestigious award. Because the Rotary Service Above Self Award implies a person who is very, very much uh, a, a compassionate and understanding and a person who wants to make a difference in the lives of others, very selfless. And this individual um, was always amongst the first to volunteer to help with any sort of charity activity or event. A, a big animal lover, uh, you remember when we had the bushfires in Australia, this young lady decided that she wanted, from all these thousands of miles away, to try and help. And so she decided that she would um, run a pop-up fundraiser and she swam uh, a number of lengths, I think it was over 100 lengths at the local pool down at the Magnet, when we could swim at the Magnet, um, and raised money there for those uh, koalas, for the Australian Koala Foundation. Um, she raised a huge amount of money also by selling delicious cakes, brownies and the like. And uh, Leah Fagan Earl is just a most remarkable young lady with a huge heart. And much as she's not going to come forward and receive this award, can we just give her that round of applause? Thank you. <laughs> She's not going to come, she's going to get it at the end. Right, um, the McSweeney Award goes to uh, uh, what might be said to be the, the, the man or woman most likely to, uh, able to overcome challenges and achieve strong results. Mike McSweeney uh, left uh, school, went to Cambridge, uh, then went into uh, professional rugby league, uh, joined the teaching profession, didn't bother with that as a job, and entered Fulham Football Club as a community manager. Um, his major claim to fame is one year, I think about 10 years ago, when one of the new transferees for, transferees for £10 million hadn't arrived in time for the Fulham Football Club first team photo. So Mike McSweeney sat down in his position, <laughs> bottom, left, front, worth I think $10 million, £7 million. Uh, the only time he's actually been valued at that uh, <laughs> as a rugby player uh, with a broken nose at fly half, I don't think he could quite play the football to the same standard. But in that vein, we have uh, Jacob Sharp, somebody who's likely to be just as successful in the future. <laughs> Amiable, witty, intelligent. He's, he makes, he, he, he makes uh, uh, very, very interesting challenges look easy, overcoming his... Uh, significant health issues, uh, plenty of blooded tissues and white shirts. Uh, <laughs> we know you're a keen scientist and problem solver, and as you say yourselves, things happen for a reason. Um, uh, in Mike McSweeney's case, he left Fulham for uh, Wimbledon uh, to help them with their community programme. He's now ma back at Fulham as the lead community manager. We wish you every best of success, Jacob, in your role at Swansea University. You're doing medical pharmacology, perhaps to help yourself out as well as the rest of the country. Um, we'll certainly have great success there and feel confident that 
the future is in good hands with you. McSweeney Award, Jacob Sharp. Jacob, thank you. And I'm going to um, just talk a little bit about the penultimate award before we move to the final award of the day. Um, the sixth form trophy goes to a student who achieves outstanding A level slash BTEC results. And there's one individual that I think we can all probably guess who that might be that has done exactly that this year. And it's Joe, Joe Stobbs. Joe is focused, he's charming, he's intelligent, uh, and he's shone in his academic studies across the board. Um, he's a mature and popular student, achieving a string of A-style grades in chemistry, maths and physics, uh, which equates to an impressive 168 UCAS points you've got just in those three there, Joe, so congratulations. He's going on to study chemical engineering at the University of Bath, where we know he's going to thrive and succeed. He's a modest young man, determined, ambitious, not just academically, but as Mr. Wilding's already alluded to, on the water as well. Joe's been a key member of the rowing squad here over the years, following, following a punishing training schedule alongside his studies, proof that you can have it all. The sixth form trophy is recognition of your outstanding A-level results, Joe. So please come forward and accept it. <laughs> and Amazon into floor and all the other agencies. We're going to have to work out how these big pots and uh, prizes get to uh, people uh, because they're worth having for the nine months that students can have them on their shelves before they have to polish them and bring them back to us. Uh, the final award, the Nouvelloni Sword of Honour, is normally uh, won by a pair of uh, likely people. The main sort of honour you've seen every day as you've gone into the sixth form. We try to find every year uh, the, the, the sword that best uh, mirrors uh, not just what's available in the marketplace but actually uh, the kind of legendary nature of the people in it. And uh, this year we've gone for a uh, Celtic, uh, antique Celtic legendary miniature sword. It'll be coming in its box and uh, uh, engraved label to you uh, through the ether, obviously, uh, and uh, we look forward to you to receiving them physically. But to the two award winners this year, uh, Kayla Raven James and James Lambert, uh, they were outstanding heads of school. Mm. Kayla, not here tonight, a student determined to succeed in everything she's undertaken. I enjoyed working with her last uh, autumn for a speech day. She's a, such a great role model for younger boys and girls. Her talents seem endless, and she's been a pleasure to have in the sixth form. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, James, throughout his time at Clare's Court, he's demonstrated an excellent work ethic and a warm and generosity in his, dealing, in his dealings both with teachers and pupils. He's much liked and greatly respected by one and all. As head boy, his leadership skills were evident on the Common Room Committee, and he's helped successfully organise and speak at many social and charity fundraising events. He's always given his time willingly and is a superb role model. Throughout lockdown, James continued to contribute, often representing the student body in our weekly heads of school meetings with wisdom and reason. He wrote an encouraging article in our weekly Stay Connected newsletter and features in the short film providing prospective students with an insight into the sixth form. James has represented the school in rowing, run half and full marathon, and kept us all smiling with his positive good humour. So, our best wishes for the future go to him and to Kayla for everything they uh, are going to do in the future, and our thanks for everything they've done with us in the past. He's going off to an apprenticeship with the BBC before starting work in the creative industries. Kayla's off to um, University at Portsmouth to continue her undergraduate studies. So, two. Uh, Kayla and James, the Nouvelloni Sword of Honour, and these certificates. Well deserved.
deserve the adulation, James. I don't know what I'm going to do without you. It won't be the same. But you wanted to say a few words too, didn't you, James? James never misses an opportunity. James never misses an opportunity. So, James, do, do come. Um, I'll, 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 uh, I suggest you anti back your um, hands after you've held this microphone, but I would uh, like to pass that to you just so you can say a few words to the student body, James. Right, well, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a weird year with everything going on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we all could be proud of ourselves, how we've done, handled it all. Uh, and a big thank you, obviously, to all the teachers who've uh, made it a lot easier than it could have been. Uh, and especially to Mr Wilding, who we have a prize for, I believe. We do. We have a so gift for you, Mr Wilding. The Lord. You have to put it away for 24 hours minimum, I think. Have you lost it? I might have lost it. Don't invite him to be your best man, anybody, because things could go... Oh, well done. So I should I give it to you, Mr. Miles? I, I think you can probably, at a metre distance, pass it across. Fine. Good gracious me. Yeah. A six. There you Fantastic. are. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Off my hat. All right. So, Josh, I need Josh. Sophie, are you able to come and Sophie? So you know that these are your heads of school. Kayla's on a boat somewhere. And Simon, do you want to come forward as well? Because I think it's, sorry Simon, I couldn't find you then. You were right under my nose. Just because you didn't have a cup of tea in your hand. But I think it would be really fitting to end this afternoon with a big thank you to our heads of school. Do join us on the platform here. Um, because they have represented you very well over the past, well, over a year. They've been fantastic to me. They've reminded me of so many things, got me out of so many scrapes. Um, so can we give all our heads of school a big round of applause? And um, just for posterity, if Mr. Hope could come up here, please, just to stand at one bookend, oh, Mrs. Yes. Rogers at the other end, just to capture the senior team. Hi, Year 13. I just wanted to say it's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you over the last two years, and I think you all know how fond I am of all of you. Uh, registering you every morning, seeing your happy, smiley faces, and having a little chat with all of you was the highlight of my school day. We won't talk about your dodgy parking or the fact that you made me walk a hundred times to that door, okay? <laughs> But whatever, wherever you go, whatever you do, I just want to wish you joy and happiness. And I'm going to miss you horribly. And take care, all of you. Thank you.
Mr. Carr for making the miracle happen. Thank you for all our live stream guests, for all of you for joining us this afternoon. It's been an absolute treat. We're going back to finish some Prosecco. We've got scones, cream and jam. We'll leave you to whatever you're up to, but we're going to finish our afternoon tea. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Could you just join me with one final thanks? None of this happens without Mrs. Rogers' energy. Uh, typical of the Clare School way, just a very quick uh, three cheers for uh, Mrs. Rogers, led, please, by the uh, uh, senior boys of, uh, uh, of the school. Uh, are we ready, please? Uh, 